Good morning. It's good to be with you today. This is Easter week. We're leading up to Easter. Sunday, we did Palm Sunday. We're looking at the cross because the idea is that we need to examine the cross a little deeper to see just what it is is happening to us. So we're looking at Psalm 22. And as you read through Psalm 22, it's part of a trilogy of psalms. It's called the cross, which is 22, the crook, which is 23, and the cross, the crook, and the crown, which is Psalm 24. Now we'll come back and look at 23 and 24 later. But today we're looking at 22, because as we read through Psalm 22, we begin to have a picture of the agony of Jesus on the cross, of what is happening there. Now, of course, all of us are familiar with the first, first line of that, sign, that psalm because it is what Jesus says on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But as we look through this psalm, we begin to see more and more what has happened to Jesus. So today, let's just look at verses uh, 6 through 10. Yesterday, we lit, lit his cry for help, his anguish. But listen to what else is happening to Jesus. But I am a worm and not a person, a disgrace of mankind and despised by the people. All of them who see me, they deride me. They sneer and shake their heads, saying, Turn him over to the Lord. Let the Lord save him. Let God rescue him, because he delights in him. Yet you are he who brought me forth from the womb. You made me trust upon my mother's breast. I, I was cast upon you from birth. You have been my God since my mother's womb. Now understand, in each stanza here, there's the pain and then there's the hope. But listen to, again what it says. I'm a worm. I am despised. People see me. They don't like me. What does Isaiah tell us? Isaiah says in Isaiah 53 that he had no stately form. He wasn't handsome that we should notice him. Why? Because he's been beaten senseless. He's been beaten by two different sets of people. He's been flogged. He's been mocked. And so the people despise me. They shake their heads. And he thought he was the son of God. They sneer. They curse. They lay things upon him. A wonderful play I saw a thousand years ago it was called Your Arms Are Too Short to Box with God. And they would come by the cross scene, and that's exactly what they say. Get down, get down, down. You said that. That's what Scripture says. Get down. You want to box with God? Get down. These derisions are nothing more than to assault the character of the Savior. The violence done to him in the scourgings, in the beatings, the mocking, the playing of the game Basilus with him, the game of the king, all of these are to impugn the person of Christ. Understand that. The beatings Thursday, the hanging Friday, the constant beration of Jesus is the whole defamation of his character. This is God on the cross. Peter tells us that he did not curse back. He was silent again, as, as Isaiah says, like a lamb before shears. Quiet. Why? Because he is receiving this. He is taking all of this in. Why? Because as he takes all of this in, he knows that it has a purpose. Now imagine in your own life how you feel when you're sneered at, when people curse at you, when people tell you to do things that you don't want to do, when they deride you, when they avoid you, when they look in your direction and whisper, when they see you coming, they avoid you. That's what's happening here. Remember, the crucifixion 
was not done in a secret place. It was done in a wide open place. This is a public hanging, if you will. You have three people there. And it's not just the people passing by who are yelling and screaming sneers and curses, but it's also the people hanging there with you. One finally comes to his senses and says, this guy's done nothing wrong. But understand that conversation through the pain of trying to hold yourself up to have enough breath to have a conversation. What is this really? This is really the enemy trying to entice Jesus to stop dying and get off of the cross. These are nothing more than those temptations. But Jesus confesses as he knows this psalm. <laughs> this is what I am at the moment. I can endure this because I trust in you. Verse 9. Yet you brought me forth from the womb. At creation I was there and I loved you and you loved me. I am there. I trust in you. I have trusted in you since the beginning of creation and beyond because we are created and we, know, we are forever. We are eternal. The psalmist who writes this, this song, speaks of their own testimony of trusting the Father. And Jesus just repeats that same thing. Lord, I trust you. Yes, as Paul tells us in Philippians, he lays aside. He does not take equality with God as a thing to be grasped, but humbles himself, taking the form of a servant. The servant is saying, I am beaten. I am battered. I am bruised. I am broken. Yet, I trust you, yet I'm going to see this through. In the first couple of verses, Lord, I trust you because, Father, I need you to deliver me. Here in the middle of this brokenness, this pain, this derision, he says, Father, I rest here with you. This is my condition at the moment, but my trust in you knows no bounds. I can rest there. They can continue to hurl insults. They can continue to spit at me. They continue to do all of these things. But Father, I trust you. My trust in you does not waver. Now apply that to our own lives. Lord, when I've been abused, Lord, when I've been avoided, Lord, when I've been called names, Lord, when I have been accused of things that are not, things that I have not done. Help me to trust you because I know that this will not last. Because you are my God and I trust in you. So Father, speak there to my heart. Speak to each of our hearts as we walk through this time. Because just like Jesus, there are times when we're despised, avoided, abused, derided, defamed. Yet he says, trust me. Keep trusting and walking with me. Precious Jesus, we bless you for today. And Lord, we thank you. Again, Lord, that you endured the shame of the cross. That we might live with you. So, Father, I pray for myself and my dear brothers and sisters that, Lord, you'd speak into our hearts this Easter. That, Lord, as we look at the cross this Friday, Lord, we will look at it with new and fresh eyes as we see you hanging there for each and every one of us. These things, Lord, we pray in your holy, your mighty, and your blessed name, Jesus. Amen. Be blessed today, dear friends.